everyone, I hope you're good. So yesterday was the last day in our 30-day Lebanese Arabic challenge courses. It went really, really fast. I'm happy that I have five days off so I can recharge, but I'm also happy that we're doing this challenge again. We will start on Monday, which is August 1, so that's exactly 30 days of doing Lebanese Arabic studying together on Zoom every single day. So it's a very, very intensive course and you can improve your Lebanese Arabic really really fast so if you're interested in doing that i'm gonna leave my email address under this video and you can get in touch and uh, yeah you still have time to sign up for the courses yalla i'm gonna do some lebanese expressions really random they're not related to each other but i just wrote them here on a piece of paper because it's things we like to use hi everyone because it's things we like to use in Lebanon and if you have questions just write them down and I can read them in the end okay so yalla let's begin uh, the first one is in English you say uh, I received an email right or uh, I got an email but in Arabic the way you say I got an email or I received an email I'm talking about Lebanese Arabic or the Levantine dialect we say an email came to me so you say وصلني email because وصل means it arrived وصلني it arrived for me so when you say وصلني email you're saying I got an email وصلني email so you're saying an email arrived to me or for me وصلني email you can also say إجيني إجيني خبر for example you know instead of saying I got a news or I got some news you say some news came to me إجيني خبر you can also say وصلني خبر إجيني خبر or وصلني email okay so you're doing it the other way around so guys when I'm saying these sentences or expressions or phrases or words say them all the time with me out loud because yeah it's one thing to listen to them and it's something else to listen and say and even write them down and by the way I can't type them now because I'm speaking and but when I finish the lesson I'm gonna type these sentences under the video okay but for now say them with me yalla so how do we say I got an email write it down in the in the chat we say وصلني email وصل it arrived وصلني it arrived for me you're saying email it arrived me arrived to me an email وصلني email uh, وصلني خبر خبر is a piece of news uh, some information news so وصلني خبر or you can also say إجيني خبر usually if you want to say it came or he came you say إجا إجا you pronounce it with a A إجا uh, but when you add the ن you're not going to say إجاني in the Lebanese dialect we don't say إجاني we say إجيني we change the A into a A so on its own the verb is إجا إجا but if you want to say came to me which means I received, you say إجيني you see the difference? إجا and إجيني okay, ne إجيني okay, and yes, وصلني email, it's correct uh, from وامدا okay, so this is the first one so إجيني خبر or وصلني خبر you can also say وصلني email uh, we don't usually say إجيني email you could, it wouldn't be wrong so this is the first sentence the second one is like totally irrelevant, has nothing to do with it. Uh, but I saw it in one of the ads and I remembered how when we were kids, we used to say when somebody, you know, when kids used to cut their hair like, you know, like that. And I have a picture of it now. I'm going to show you. We say, we used to say, Tase is a bowl, like, like a big bowl. Okay, you put something in it like food or whatever. So when you say, like it's so straight as if they put like a, a pot or a, like a bowl on their head and they cut their ha uh, hair accordingly, you know. So that's why we say asis sharo atase. Asis literally means the cut in Lebanon, at least like in the in the village where I used to grow up in the neighborhood, we used to say this as kids. Asis sharo piko. Okay, yalla. But the ex the ex the real expression or the phrase is uh, the next one is again I'm saying to you totally different the expressions today unrelated okay the next one is 
بكبسة زر زر is a button it can be a button on your clothes it can also be like the 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 switch of the light it's it's a button you know زر uh, that's a زر uh, usually زر is we don't use it like that for the for the light except here I'm gonna explain to you so زر usually is a button okay when you want to talk about uh, the light the light switch we usually say فأسط الضوء فأس فأس فأسط الضوء some people say كبسة الضوء I I use فأسة الضوء okay but here when we say we كبسة زر literally you're saying in the in a click of a button something يعني you can do so easily we كبسة الضر يعني in an instant I can do it يعني it's so simple it's so easy يعني you can say بعملة I can do it بكبسة زر I can do it with a with a click of a button or uh, yeah like just to say something is so 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 simple okay كبسة زر كبسة is a switch as I said uh, and زر is a button as if you are saying with a switch of a button anyways it means something is so simple you can do it easily and like without any effort بكبسة زر كبسة زر okay يلا the next one is a verb and is like Typically, like typical Lebanese verb, we uh, the verb is برحش برحش in the past, and in the present it's ببرحش برحش ببرحش. It's not to look for something. It's to look for a detail, maybe in a menu, or maybe to look for uh, something in a pile of stuff. You know, like uh, maybe in the drawer there's so many things. So Anna. I'm برحش. It's not just I'm looking, but like I, I'm moving things and I'm looking for something in a pile of stuff. Okay, so برحش in the past ببرحش. For example, uh, if a waiter comes and uh, gives me the menu, I can tell him, yeah, uh, give me ten minutes. عطينا عشر دقايق. رح برحش. رح برحش I will برحش which means I will you know look for the details بالمنو رح برحش بالمنو you can also say uh, uh, أنا عم برحش بالجرور I am برحشing <laughs> in the drawer جرور means drawer like I'm looking for you know like something in the drawer that might be messy so the verb in the past is برحش ببرحش يلا type them Type them so I can see if you spell them correctly in the end. I'm gonna type them as I said in the chat and the, under the video when the live finishes. But you guys also try to help each other and write them down. So that's barhash bi barhash. Um, the next one is nfaasit. Nfaasit. Nfaasit comes from the word faase. I also just can say just faase, ya Allah, faase ulo, faase. Faase is like a crack you know for example and in during easter uh, like we crack each other's eggs we play and we see who wins okay because we boil the eggs and we we like i have an egg and you have an egg and we play with each other's <laughs> eggs and whoever cracks the other person's egg wins so and is a crack and also, if you ch check it in the dictionary, it also means kind of, uh, what's the word? Uh, when an egg hatches, because it cracks open. That's why maybe it means hatches. So, fa'se is a crack. But when I use it as a verb, nfa'asit, nfa'asit, it's like, oh no, like I suddenly felt gutted is the word in English, or like I felt upset because maybe I heard something bad news or like, Something bad happened, and maybe I was in a good mood, and suddenly, فأسد, like I felt cracked, which means I suddenly became in a bad mood, or I felt upset, فأسد. or you can say فأسد, just the noun, فأسد. so for example, maybe uh, we were traveling, okay, and then, yeah, this really happened with me, like this uh, this weekend I was meant to be in Lebanon and I received an email, a uh, message, saying that my trip was cancelled. 
And then as a result, I can say, Allah nfa'asit ulo. I can just say nfa'asit, but I can say, Ya Allah, oh my God, like Ya Allah nfa'asit ulo. That ulo, which we use, like, has no meaning. It's just like, it's a, it's a sound we make to uh, express that we are a bit annoyed, ulo, you know. Nfa'asit ulo, nfa'asit. Uh, or I can just use an, the noun, I can say, Ya Allah fa'asit. It's a crack, which means it's, it's annoying. Fa'asi. Okay? You can use it as a verb and you can use it as a noun. Fa'asit as a verb or Ya Allah fa'asi. It's like annoying. It's something upsetting. It's upsetting. Fa'asi. The next one is Shu hal msibe. Shu hal msibe. Msibe is a disaster. And hal is the abbreviation of Haydil, which means this. Haydil msibe, which means this disaster. Hal msibe is the abbreviation and it means this disaster. Shu hal msibe. You're literally saying, what is this disaster? Of course, you don't mean to say, what is this disaster? You're saying, what a disaster. Shu hal msibe. But we use this in two totally different scenarios. When something really, really big happens and it's really a disaster, you say shuhal msibe. Or you can just say msibe, msibe, disaster. When I just say msibe, you know something very bad happened. Msibe, like we have to sort it or if it's not even something we can sort, you can say msibe, it's a big deal, it's a disaster. But a lot of times we use it in a totally different setting to say it's not a big deal, why are you making a big deal out of it? You see, from the way I say things, you can guess from my the tone of my voice, maybe the body language, if you really mean it or not, and from the context as well. You know, if somebody is making a big deal out of, you know, something and it's really not a big deal, you can say to them, you know, what a disaster. You mean to say it's not a disaster and you don't have to overreact or you don't have to make a big deal out of it. Okay? Say it with me, guys. And uh, <laughs> there's another one. Again, totally different. You say to someone, Shujeb if I break it down, it will make zero sense in English. But then I'm going to tell you what's the meaning of it. Jeb means he brought. Shu jeb, as if you're saying, what did he bring? La jeb, so that he brought. What did he bring, so that he brought? Shu jeb, la jeb. It has really nothing at all to do with it. You're just saying like, how is this even related to what you're saying? Shujeb la jeb. Maybe I'm talking about, I don't know, uh, I don't know, the lessons and um, something went wrong in the lesson and I'm talking to you and suddenly, out of nowhere, you say to me, oh, you know what? Uh, I was cooking chicken and it was really good. And then I can look at you like, what the hell? Like, how is this related to what I'm saying? You say, shujeb la jeb. Like, shujeb la jeb. What is this topic? How is this topic related to what I was talking about? Like, it's not related. Shujeb la jeb. Shujeb la jeb. So, this is exactly what you say. It's fixed. It's a fixed expression. It's a question. You just say to someone when they are talking about uh, something totally different or they are off topic or mm, they're saying something irrelevant to what you're talking about. Shujeb la jeb. Shujeb la jeb. And then, uh, also sometimes we say shujeb la jeb, like, you know, when I'm assuming something wrong, uh, another person can tell me, like, shujeb la jeb, no, it's not that, it's something else, you know? Yeah. And <laughs> the last one is a colloquial expression, it's a word. <laughs> you say to someone, when you just want them to leave, and you, you just say to them in Arabic, slide, slide, zahit. Zahit is slide, literally zahit. And uh, sometimes even like uh, my friends or my sister, when they don't want to say the word to me, let's say on WhatsApp, my sister does it a lot to me. And then uh, she just puts that, you know, emoticon on the, on the, like the guy or the girl who's surfing, like because they are sliding. So she wants to tell me like, you know, just slide off or something like that. Zahit, 
if it's a guy you you can say to them dahit as a joke of course if you say to someone in a situation that's serious it would be really offensive but if it's your friends or your family uh, you can use it like as a joke zahit. and if it's a girl it's zahte <laughs> zahte in the feminine form and in the masculine form it's zahit. and you know what in lebanon we are very open to like you know these kinds of expressions and jokes and stuff where we don't get offended easily like, you know it's not like we are the most polite people in the world you know so you can say these to friends they will even find it funny that you know you as a as a lebanese language learner you even know this so next time somebody stays for a long time on the phone or maybe like they are in your home and you just want to sleep and you just don't, don't want them to stay longer if it's your close friend or family or whatever you can say zahit like go away or zahti okay literally you're saying slide i think these are the expressions that i wanted to talk about today yalla let's repeat them as i said they are totally uh, unrelated i am going to type them in the chat box you type them with me now as well but i'm going to type them under the video when i finish uh, this lesson and um, what else was i going to say yeah i'm going to repeat it and again if you're interested in the 30 day lebanese arabic challenge courses which i do with my students on zoom uh, i'm going to leave my email address it's shariq at globetrotwitharabic.com you can send an email and i can send you all the information along with the course plans and uh, what we do and the courses are very very structured and uh, much more serious than th this lesson definitely okay yalla so the first one yalla i'm gonna ask you you tell me okay what's the answer uh how do you say i got an email i'm gonna wait two seconds ten seconds if nobody says it i'm gonna say it how do you say i got an email do you say i got an email or an email came to me how do you say it yalla i'm gonna wait ten <laughs> شو وصل يلا somebody help me وصلني email it's written here by uh, I don't know what's your name وصلني email and you you spelled it correct which is very good وصلني email an email came to me which means I got an email the second one was uh, well, let me just scroll down oh my god so many things that i didn't see i, I will check them later on uh we're not gonna say jene email you can say jene email yeah wasn't email perfect and you can say jene email it's not wrong but i would use jene more for khabar i got some news so some news came to me jene email or wasn't khabar even you can use them interchangeably wasn't email wasn't khabar or jene uh, khabar you can use it jene email not so much okay how do you say when somebody cuts their hair like you know like very straight like a round haircut usually it's for little boys so how do we say it we say jene uh, i would say jene email not jele email jene with the n So, yalla, tell me about the haircut. How do you say when somebody cuts their hair like, you know, on the on the pot or on the bowl? Asis sha'ru shu ashu asis sha'ru ashu I'm going to wait for the answer. Shu no one knows. Asis sha'ru atasi atasi asis sha'ru atasi he cut his hair he has cut he has a haircut that is like you know on a on a <laughs> zaitune we're not gonna say tanjara possibly at tanjara yeah i don't know if people say it but we say more asis sha'ru atasi okay or the picon haircut the picon is like the cheese the lebanese cheese we said yeah you know asis sha'ru picon he cut his hair like a picon like i like the photo that i showed you the ad let me very quickly show so it's for those of you who weren't here at the beginning of the lesson one moment yeah this is the haircut as <laughs> sha'ru atase you see tayyib yalla let's let's go on okay 
the next one is بكبسه زر بكبسه زر شو يعني يلا who's gonna tell me what's بكبسه زر زر is a button and كبسه is like a switch when you say بكبسه زر what does it mean like that you know so easily something that is not difficult at all and it doesn't require any effort uh, who remembers how we say to look for something to look for details yes it's super easy very good so when you look for details uh, in a on a page or on a menu or when you look for something uh, in a pile of stuff like in the drawer or like you know there's so many stuff and you're looking for that something it's better what I'm not gonna say it. Ber. Shu. Shu yalla. Matsaudule wujje. You see what I said? I said matsaudule wujje. Matsaudule wujje literally means don't blacken my face. Here's another expression. So, matsaudule. وجه literally سود بيسود to make black وجه means face وجه means my face ما تسودوا لي وجه I'm saying it to you plural as a joke of course ما تسودوا لي وجه don't blacken my face which means don't make my face black which means don't embarrass me you know because I was teaching you and you know you're supposed to know it and nobody's saying it so it's like I become embarrassed and I say to you come on say it guys ما تسودوا لي وجه ما تسودولي وجه that was an, that that was an unexpected and bonus expression but we use it a lot ما تسودولي وجه or you can use it in the past سودلي وجه he blackened my face literally سودلي وجه which means he embarrassed me or you know he he did something in front of people and that that something made me embarrassed you know his actions made me embarrassed سودلي وجه بيضلي وجه on the other hand is the opposite like he made me proud it comes from أبيض which is white and أسود is black that's why سود is to make black and بيض is to make white to whiten بيض so بيضلي وجه literally he whitened my face which means he made me proud so يلا بيضولي وجه I'm saying it to you in the plural, in the imperative plural, بيدولي, بيدولي وجه, which means, يلا, make me proud, you should know the answers, okay? بيدولي وجه, okay? Or, ما تسودولي وجه, بيدولي وجه. يلا, the next one. So, as we said, to look for something in so many, uh, in a pile of stuff, it's برحش ببرحش. And what, should, what can I say when suddenly I felt like upset? Oh, no. Something bad happened, or I got bad news. What can I say? It comes from cracking eggs and being cracked. Shu. No one's gonna say. I'm gonna wait literally 10 seconds. So, what when something is cracked and I'm cracked and I suddenly feel upset? How do I say it? Hi, Mauricio. Yalla, by dooly, wish somebody say the answer. Nobody wants to say the answer. Okay, it's okay, I'm gonna say it. It's nfaasit. Suddenly I felt upset or sad. Not okay, you can say nkasar albi, albi maksur. That one is like I'm heartbroken or uh, I felt really sad. Nfaasit, like mm, it's, it's upsetting. Okay, and for us, suddenly I became in a bad mood. But you know, you can say albi maksur plus de martir. I don't know what's your name. So it's not albi maksura like you wrote it with a temar buta. No, because el is masculine, so it has to be albi maksur, not maksura. Okay, but albi maksur, you're saying my heart is broken. It's a little bit different from the expression that I'm saying when I say in fa'asit, It's not like I'm heartbroken. No, it's like I felt a little bit upset or annoyed okay nfaasit or i just can say it as a noun i can say ya allah fa'si just fa'si ulo just fa'si fa'si a crack which means oh that's upsetting or that's annoying fa'si i give the example of my ticket being cancelled so as a result i can say ya allah fa'si fa'si and if i want to say to someone don't make a big deal out of it like it's not a big disaster how can i say it i'm gonna again wait five seconds to see if somebody can remember it 
Thank you. So, Shu, how can I say it? Mm, it's not a disaster or what a disaster is this? How do I say it? Shu, hal, msibe. Shu hal msibe. Shu hal msibe. So when I say it, msibe, and you see my eyes are like stressed, my body and everything, and I'm really expressing it's a disaster. Yeah, that's really a disaster. Msibe. But when I say, nih, that's okay. Nih, shu hal msibe. Yes, Nabila. Okay, you see, finally, Nabila bayadat li wujji. Shu hal msibe, what a disaster. Okay. Hi, Nabila. Nabila is my student. I'm going to see her on Monday. And Zaytouni too. Okay. So, shu hal msibe, what a disaster. Uh, which means it's not a big deal. Don't worry, it's not a big deal. Okay. If somebody is making a big deal out of something, you can say shu hal msibe. <laughs> that one is in standard Arabic. Uh, she's saying, Ya laha min karitha kabira. In the dialect, we don't say it. But you can say, Shuhal kirsi. Kirsi is another word for msibi, by the way. And you see uh, that karitha word that she wrote there? We don't pronounce it as karitha in the dialect. We say kirsi. Kirsi. Shuhal kirsi. That's a very nice point, by the way. You just made me remember. We can use them interchangeably. You can say, Shuhal msibi. Shuhal kirsi, what a disaster. And you mean to say otherwise. Shuhal kirsi, shuhal msibi. And then uh, the next one was shujib lajib. Shujib lajib is like to say, like, how is this related to what we're talking about? It's totally irrelevant and totally unrelated. Shujib lajib. Shujib lajib. You're literally saying, what he brought, so he brought. It really just, uh, you don't even have to know what every word means because it's totally uh, unrelated. You just memorize that it means like it's totally, you know. Yes, shujib lajib, it's j-e-e-b. I prefer to write it like that because if I see it like you wrote it, Joanna, hi Joanna, it would be j-e-b. It's not j-e-b, shujib. I would write it with two e's and a b, personally. But there's no right and wrong way of writing, especially when it comes to the Roman alphabet, okay? So, shujib lajib, it means it's not related. What you're saying is not related to what we're talking about. Like, how is this related to what we're talking about? And the last one, if somebody is like on the phone for a long time or texting you nonstop or they're in your home and you want them to leave, what can you say to them? Of course, don't say it to strangers. Just say it to your friends or family or... Shu. Slide. How do you say slide? Eh? Slide. Oh, thank you, thank you. You are kind and beautiful. Thank you so much. Yes, Joanna. Good. It's Zahit with a T. <laughs> you see, when it comes to like very slang words and the most important words in the world, everybody suddenly is knowing the answers. Well done, Zaytuni. Well done, Nabila. Zahit. <laughs> yes, zahit, and in the feminine form is zahte. And um, uh, if somebody is saying, it, it shouldn't be takhruj min bayti, ukhruj min bayti. Cynthia, Cynthia, my sister is here. My sister says it a lot, I told you. When I'm typing a, less, uh, a lot or I'm speaking to you and I, you want me to leave, what do you say? Slide. <laughs> zahte. <laughs> okay, so zahit and zahte. <laughs> and... Uh, my sister wrote another one, ashta. Ashta is like cream cheese, it's like sweet cream. And if a, if a girl is really pretty or something, you can say to her, ashta. But it's really, really, really slang. You can look at her like that and say, shuya ashta, like with the eye like that. <laughs> shuya ashta, she's laughing. My sister, she has a lot of sense of humor, by the way. Okay, so you, you can say, shuya ashta, with the eye like that. It's so, so, so slang, you know, only like guys in the street say it. And it's like a pickup line for girls. Like, oh, hey, you, what, you, <laughs> cream cheese or like sweet cream cheese. Which means like, oh, hey, beautiful, shuya ashta. Okay. And yes, somebody's asking, what's to'burne mean? On to'burne and to'burine. To'burne, okay. To'bur is, enta means you bury. 
تقبرني literally you bury me so you're not saying it with a b you're dropping the b because you mean to say may you bury me so you're dropping the b and you're saying تقبرني may you bury me <laughs> you guys are making me laugh <laughs> okay Joanna like one more second so تقبرني literally may you bury me so when I say this it doesn't mean I'm literally saying to someone, oh, hey, God, come kill me because I want to be dead and I want you to bury me. No, it's a way to say, I love you so much that I want to die before you and uh, I want to be buried before you. But of course, this is a very, uh, like when we say it, it has nothing to do with all the, this drama. It's, it's a fun way of uh, saying this. Even to kids, we say, do we say this to kids a lot? If I have a baby, my nephew, my niece, if I love them so much, and I love them really, adore them so much, I say, تقبرني, may. And if it's a girl, I can say to her directly, تقبرني, in the feminine form. تقبرني, تقبرني. May you bear me, and I love you so much, and it's a way of pampering to a child, and hey, you're so cute, تقبرني, تقبرني, like that. Okay? I think... Uh, Okay, wait. I think that's it for today. Uh, if you have any other expressions you want to know about or if uh, there is, you know, any questions you have before I go, let me know. <laughs> I'm happy you enjoyed it. What's your name, Place des Martyrs? So let me see if anyone has a question. I'm just scrolling these down. Thank you. What's your name, Turkish, for everyone so I can say your names while I'm speaking to you? Thank you so much. Um, I think that's it. I don't think anyone has a question. I just spoke to you all. I really hope you enjoyed it. And as I said, I'm going to type these sentences in the video. And if you're interested in the 30 day challenge, yalla get in touch. Maybe you can finally learn this language with it, with more structure. Marhaba Junaid. Yalla. Ma'a salami. Yalla. Bye. Bye guys.